Imagine you've moved to a new country by yourself. No spouse or partner with you, and you're all alone in a completely different environment. Well, spring is around the corner, and for all you singles out there who want to shake off those winter blues and maybe get ready to meet that special someone, in today's episode, I'm going to give you three top expat flirting tips. Don't forget, we may be from different cultures, but we all speak one common language, body language. I'm Paul Brown, this is West International. Every country has its own very specific traditions about giving birth. In the Netherlands, many people prefer to give birth at home. However, for such a vital and sensitive subject, many expats find it difficult to come around to the Dutch way of thinking. Find out more about this in our service item. Our expats in the Vox Pops this week are asked about their knowledge of Dutch heroes, both past and present. Cecilia catches a family in their pajamas this week in the surprise item. But first, let's go over to Nicola, who's about to enjoy the taste of American hospitality. Today's stop on my culinary journey is Delft. As you know, I'm usually invited for dinner, but today Stephanie Kloneman has invited me for breakfast. Stephanie is from the US and has lived in Switzerland and Saudi Arabia. She moved to the Netherlands four and a half years ago with her Dutch husband Johan and their children. So let's go and see how Americans start the day. So Stephanie, what's on the menu this morning? We're gonna have American style pancakes for breakfast. So what's the difference then between American pancakes and Dutch pancakes? They're thicker and fluffier, more like a cake, and we serve them with maple syrup. Um, so do you think then that possibly your American pancakes are a hangover or a remnant from the Dutch influence on American cuisine? Perhaps. Perhaps. Should we go and find out then? Oh, Should we okay. get cooking? Yes. If you think back four and a half years ago, what difficulties did you face when you first arrived here? Well, I moved here with, with two young children from a previous marriage, and, and that sort of adds its own dynamic of uh, challenges into it. You said earlier on that you purposely chose to put your children into a Dutch school. Why was that? Uh, my husband's a, a pilot, and plan we're planning to, to be here for some time. So it was important to us to not only learn the language, but also to really submerge ourselves in the culture. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be nice for them to uh, enjoy the, the holidays and all the normal kind of Dutch kid festivities that go along with um, a school environment. Mm -hmm. And so they're completely settled in now, at home, integrated, speak the language. Yes. Sickening, isn't it, how quickly they learn. They I know. Learn, isn't it? <laughs> What's the difference between the expat community here in Delft and that in The Hague? I think primarily it has to do with the fact that a lot of expats in, in The Hague are here with large companies on a short-term contract. So there's a lot of turnover. Okay. That kind of creates a, a, a different environment, whereas a lot of my friends here in Delft um, are married to someone local and, and plan to raise their family here. Okay. And also there are a lot of uh, international students at the Technical University. Oh, of course. I forgot those. There are a big population here in Delft. Yeah. And do you cook these every morning? When we moved here originally, I, I, I fixed these quite a bit, but um, I don't so much anymore. We like the Dutch ones just as much. I do bring the syrup back from the United States. <coughs> okay, so you, you bring foodstuffs back. Is anything else you miss? Stuff that you can't get here that you can get at home? I have a really hard time finding pants short enough because traditionally Dutch people are very tall. Uh -huh. So I, I have to save up until the, the next uh, trip over to go and buy a whole bunch of short pants. Yes, they are very tall here, aren't they? Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I always know, that's what I notice when I go back to England, I'm sort of in London in the tube. And suddenly, I'm sort of the same size as everybody else, <laughs> whereas here I'm constantly sort of looking, looking up, you yeah. know, being like a short ass. So Stephanie, you said that you didn't bring loads of stuff from the States, but is there anything here that sort of reminds you of home, anything in your house that really... Well, since we're in the kitchen, 
I will point out my very large refrigerator. Ah, yes, your what I thought was a walk-in wardrobe. It's a big family, big fridge. So what does it do? It cooks, it's a it microwave. It does, in fact, it cleans as well. No, it cleans itself, it hoovers <laughs> the floor. It's a little piece of home that I was able to incorporate into my Dutch lifestyle. Before we eat, is there anything I should know we should do? Eat well. Eat well. And oh, enjoy. I think I can manage that okay. one. Okay. Oh, I love that syrup. You like it? Mmm. That's it for this week. If you'd like to have a go at making these delicious pancakes, please go to our website where you'll find the ingredients and all the instructions. See you next week. Don't know where, don't know when, but I promise it'll be good. Bye-bye. We have uh, a lot of heroes in the Netherlands. The, the one that stuck his finger in the dike, I think that's the only one I know. Well, I love art, so my heroes would be Ron Tals, Rembrandt von Rhein. The biggest hero is, of course, Cruyff. My most famous hero, of course, is Abel Tasman, because he found us. Unfortunately, he reported back to your government, it's a worthless island, please don't bother to come back. <laughs> I think he might have made a mistake, don't you? I, I have great admiration for Holland and for the Dutch. They have a marvelous history and very industrious. So, And coming from New Orleans, I know they know a lot about levees and stopping water. The Netherlands has the philosophy that pregnancy is not an illness. The view is that childbirth should be as natural as possible and preferably within a familiar environment. Many people choose to give birth at home rather than at hospital. And as a result, the Netherlands has one of the highest home birth rates in Europe at 30%. Coming from another country with different cultural aspects and moral beliefs, many expats are wary of the way that Holland deals with the issue of childbirth. The Dutch way of giving birth is often portrayed as somewhat barbaric because of the reluctancy to make use of pain-relieving medication. I started teaching really because, and our training, because I got fed up of listening to the negative stories and uh, women telling negative experiences about giving birth here in the Netherlands. Uh, you can have a very positive experience having your baby here if you know the right questions to ask and where to get the right information. In other countries, people want a safety net. What if something goes wrong? In this country, they feel that women are in charge of their bodies. Their bodies know what to do. The baby is on the way, hormones are going to help you deal with the pain and with the coming of the baby. Even if your baby is due to be born in a hospital, you have to endure most of the labor at home. This will be under the guidance of a midwife, a fully trained professional who will ensure the environment for the expectant mother is safe and stress-free. If you want to have your baby in hospital, the midwife will transfer you when she thinks you're ready and will deliver your baby in hospital for you if the birth goes according to plan your home within two hours. Now, a lot of expats are very scared of that because they think, I've just had a baby, how can you send me home? What about the risk of infection? What happens if my baby's not all right? But we have a Kramsorg system, a backup system here that is there to make sure all those things happen. A midwife who comes to visit you, who actually give you many more hours one-to-one -one care than you will get in a hospital. The aftercare system is covered by health insurance. The day you bring your baby home, you are entitled to a home nurse for either five or seven hours each day for almost a week. This person will show you how to breastfeed, bathe and clothe your new baby. She will also prepare you light meals, do washing, ironing and some light housework. And if you have other kids, she can concentrate on them, leaving you to tend to your new baby. My goal is to bridge the gap between the Dutch culture or way of giving birth in this country and that of the parents who come from different countries around the world and to sort of have a meeting point between the two. If you are planning to have a child or if you are coming ex expecting a child to this country, do your best to find an organization or a course that will provide you with information. You will be reassured that you can get what is important to you. Things are organized differently but you can make the best of both your personal beliefs and the Dutch system. This way you will get satisfied with having a child here. For more information about pregnancy and childbirth, take a look at delfmama.nl or greatexpectations.nl. The Night Watch, Rembrandt. I've been now six times to the Rijks Museum. I sit there and each time I see it, it is a new picture. It is probably the most synonymous heritage I would have with the Netherlands. The pearl, the lady with the pearl. And that's a Vermeer, a girl with the pearl earring. MC Escher, 
and it's two hands drawing. Whenever you think of the Netherlands, we think of people thinking out of the box. We think of people who are taking a different approach to life. This gentleman here proved it. In America, we would call that Van Gogh, and here they say Van Gogh. I know it's by Vincent Van Gogh, but I couldn't tell you the name. Uh, what is it? The sunflowers, the Van Gogh. It's nearly time for us to go and explore the world of expat flirting. But first, let's take a look at this week's surprise item. Vincent and Isabel recently gave birth to a wonderful baby girl. Now, add to that their busy work and busy lives, and there's not been a lot of time for one-on-one -on -one romance for this couple. A friend of theirs, upon seeing our program, decided to contact us and set up a surprise. So, let's go over and see Cecilia and see what she has in store. Isabel Misento's house. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Can we come oh, in? Gosh. We'll let you get dressed. <laughs> so I hear that you've been in the Netherlands for quite some time. Where mm. do you come from? <laughs> so I'm coming from Belgium originally, yeah. but um, actually I spent here 10 years from 7 to 17 years old. Then. I went to, to Belgium for my studies and then I came back because, well, the day basically I started working, I thought one day I'll be back in the Netherlands. I really enjoy it here. So you met your husband here, mm -hmm. Vicente, mm -hmm. and where did you guys meet? Uh, at the EPO, European Patent Office. And uh, we met there because we started uh, yeah, around the same time. Mm -hmm. and, um, and voila. That's how it and he's here. Or he couldn't be here. Um, he's sick, actually. Oh. Uh, so I think he's sleeping. <laughs> and when like... he's also from Belgium, or he's from Spain. He's from Spain. Yeah, he's okay. from Spain. Yeah. yeah. And this and... little one is her name is Aina. Aina. Mm -hmm. She was born here. Yeah. And how Six did how ago. was that experience? Uh, you know, well, having the baby in the Netherlands. Well, it's. Uh, was a nice experience, of course. Well, now, now it went really well. Really, it's. Uh, I mean, if if you just know from the start uh, how the system works here, mm -hmm. and you just agree to it, well, that's. Uh, I mean, you know, you know from the start. So, uh, now it went really well. You know? <laughs> and uh, of your friends at the European Patent Office, do you have a clue on who could be allowing us to surprise you so early in the morning? Maybe. <laughs> And who do you think that would be? Mm, well, I'm thinking of Arno. Yes? Yes. Arno Lab. So he told me that you guys had a very trying year last year. You got married, you have this new house, new baby, mm. and he wanted to give you guys this cookbook and also a voucher for two at the Paul Van Walden uh, restaurant in Reichweig. Okay. And he says he'll wow. also babysit for you. <laughs> Can we trust um, him? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Vicente. Uh, he just woke up. <laughs> yeah. Because he's sick. <laughs> so you guys get a lovely dinner for two at the Paul Van Walden restaurant in Reichweig. And uh, your friend Arno. We'll be babysitting Aina. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you, Isabel Misente, for thank letting you. us in your home so early in the morning. We hope you have a great dinner yeah. at Paul Van Varden. And we'll see you next time. Bye -bye. Thank you. So this is Isabel Misente surprise. If you'd like to surprise your family, friends, husband, wife, please let us know and check out the website. See you later. Oh, I don't know. Is it an Indian spy? In the Middle East, the prince. She was a Dutch lady. I think she was from Harlem and she was a, a double spy or a spy. At least she was executed in this way. Wow. She was reportedly a spy. Uh, some people would also say she was actually an agent, not a spy. Hmm. That name sounds familiar. Uh, Van Nistelrooy. Well, he is a very charming soccer player, isn't he? He's a very ugly football player because he plays for Manchester United and I'm a Liverpool fan. OK. 
he must be famous because there's a dance theatre named after him somewhere in The Hague, Dr. Anton Philipsa. Well, Anton Philips is the founder of, of the uh, uh, electronic industry, Philips in Eindhoven. Vacuum cleaners, all kinds of things, yeah. Uh, coffee makers or electronics, yeah, I know for sure. Here we are at the expat dating event. Now, now it hasn't got going just yet. It's a little bit early, so people are still arriving here. And uh, you can see it's filling up behind me. Now, I, I, I've been off the market for nine years myself, so I'm not looking for a result tonight. But I am going to participate and join in and see how it all works. On the left here, it seems we have all the men. Now, over this side, it appears we have our ladies. Well, it seems like the girls are having a good time, but it has to be said the guys look a little tense. The ladies are enjoying their drinks and the men are busy talking strategy. Now what do our single expats expect from tonight? I don't really have any expectations. This is my first um, expat event. For new friends, maybe? Yeah, to have fun and to find out what uh, speed dating is about. It, it never happens in, in a day, anyway. The only thing that I expect for the first day is just uh, having a nice time and find a nice person, that's all. Yeah, just have fun, do something different. And different it will be, because tonight is not common old speed dating, it's eye dating. A new way of speed dating which has found its way over here from the United States. I want to first ask the man to come a little bit forward until this line. Please, come a little bit forward, we're going to start the event. With eye flirting, it's all about contact without talking. So, no more clumsy conversations or painful silences. For one minute, just eye contact and body language. And after that minute, you change table and eye flirt with your next date. It's a little weird, but it's, it's kind of fun, actually, having to communicate with somebody without speaking. And people say some really weird things when they can't communicate properly. Like this woman told me she came here on a horse. In the beginning, I, I found it, yeah, a bit more awkward. I uh, I didn't really know what to do, but in the end, I was I felt more more comfortable. <laughs> it was fun with some guys. <laughs> it's complicated, honestly. It's unusual. He has been forced not to communicate by talking. It forces you to be creative, and I think that's a good thing. It's a good icebreaker. And it's good for your miming skills. Although I'm not sure if I fully understand what the lady meant by, are you a player? How did you find it? I'm uh, fun. And uh, now I'm, you know, nervous. Difficult. I was not expecting that it would be so difficult because, yeah, I, maybe I was not prepared. I didn't do my homework, so... <laughs> uh, what, what I found interesting is that removing the barrier of language gives you a completely different way of communicating with a person. How did you find that, that, that added to the experience of, of speed dating, if you will? It was different. However, I, don't, I cannot compare because I've never been on, on speed, speed dating before. Okay. But um, I think it was, it was original. Awkward. <laughs> Is there one way a woman could win your heart? Um, yeah. She should have the same interest in me. Okay, I thought you were going to say buy me a Ferrari or something Sorry. like that, but I have the same interests as you. Pay the bills. <laughs> Pay the bills. <laughs> I wanted to find out the top three expat flirt tips. I therefore got myself into the crowd to do some research among the participants. I found that although the audience was representing a lot of cultures, Polish, English, German, Korean, to name but a few, I must say that everybody seemed to be pretty much on the same page in terms of what they were looking for in a date. And I found the top three flirting tips, which I'll reveal in a few minutes. I ask, how was your list? Were there a lot of yeses or noes or maybes? Um, I think there were five yes. A few yes, a um, few maybes, a bit of noes as well, yeah. A lot of maybes, a lot of noes, but there are also yes. Oh, well, the results should have been out by now, so we're waiting oh, really? for the results. Yeah, 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 so you keep your fingers crossed, yeah? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, okay, all right, there's a lucky lady here somewhere, I think, for this young man, yeah? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. let's hope. <laughs> okay. And as the evening wore on, most of the single expats seemed to have found their date for the night. And for the lucky few, maybe even two. Some were still looking for the right match, whilst others seemed to have given up hope altogether. 
I can hear the music cranking up here and the tables being pushed back. What happens from now? Where do we go from here? Uh, we, we've got another dance event there to share, so we're going to dance the night away. Okay, well that sounds like a plan. We're going to head back in there and see what's happening on the dance floor. In the meantime, you guys can go off and look at this week's cultural agenda. And don't go away, because when you get back, we'll have the top three expat flirting tips. Remember the jazzy songs of Incognito? Always there and don't you worry about a thing were their top hits in the early 90s. Go and see them in Zutomir to dance, enjoy and relive their funky tunes. A living legend saxophone player, Sonny Fortune, was a member of the band Mongo Santa Maria. He's performed with George Benson, Oliver Nelson, Roy Brooks and many more. International Women's Day is a major day of global celebration for the economic, political and social achievements of women past, present and future. In countries like China, Russia, Vietnam and Bulgaria, International Women's Day is a national holiday. Check out how your city will celebrate this day on their website. Every first Thursday of the month between 6 and 8 p.m., complimentary snacks and a typical Dutch appetizer in Bar Bistro Ruben. From 9 p.m., live music. For more tips on going out, visit our website, www.westinternational.nl. So, here it is, folks, the expat flirt top three. In third place, our expat women find it attractive if a man plays hard to get. And number three for our expat men is that a man likes it when a woman displays subtle gestures to show their interest, like playing with their hair. Number two for the ladies. A man should not be an open book, but should be a little mysterious. Whereas for the man, the woman should be self-confident and not afraid to take risks. And the most important thing for a woman is, a date should be fun. So, the number one tip is make sure you have a good sense of humor and can make a woman laugh. And the most attractive thing for a man is a woman who is playful and spontaneous, but has a naughty twinkle in her eye. Well, folks, that's pretty much it for this week's show. I was going to head home, but looking at it, there's still much of a party left. So I'm going to stay here for a while, but you guys have had enough. Until next week, don't forget, you are what you watch. Good night.